Welcome to your Daily Writing Habit, episode number 186. If you are writing a book or thinking about writing a book, or maybe you've started writing a book and you're having some trouble getting it done, you are in the right place. Even if you have already written your book and now you need some help reaching your readers to let them know about it, we cover that here too. Hello, I'm your host, Christine Whitmarsh. If you're looking for me online, look up Christine Inc., I-N-K. Each day I'm sharing with you the writing habits I've learned over my 18 years as a ghostwriter, book coach, and author. I have found that three things in particular have a huge impact on your success as an author, and they can turn someone who doesn't necessarily consider themselves a writer into one. Those three things are writing fundamentals, productivity, and mindset habits. Here's today's quote. Conversation isn't about proving a point. True conversation is about going on a journey with the people you are speaking with. Ricky May. And speaking of that, it is Writing Fundamentals Day, and we are going to talk about dialogue. Now, you might recall in Saturday's episode, if you're looking it up later, it's episode number 184, I talked about scenes and how they're important not only in fiction writing, but also in nonfiction books. Today, let's talk dialogue, since I know that for many of you out there, many authors, that's a very challenging element of writing, and I'm actually in love with this element of writing myself. Um, As I mentioned on Saturday, a scene with a place, people, and dialogue is a very powerful way to convey a specific point or lesson in your book, and I'm talking about nonfiction books just as much as fiction. It's the most intense variation of story, which, as we know, is the most effective way people learn. That being said, now let's deal with the dreaded D word, dialogue. For so many writers, even the pros, writing writing dialogue, especially writing it well, is a major pain in the butt. (laughs) And this is strange because how can we be so challenged by something that is so second nature to us all as human beings, you know, talking to each other? (laughs) The challenge is trying to recreate in our books the experience of a quote unquote normal conversation, but... And here's the catch, to recreate it in a way that also reveals things about characters. Now in nonfiction, you are, as the author, you are the character, and in a way that moves the story forward and kind of like a trail of breadcrumbs leads the reader to your point. Certainly no small task to do this. In order to pull off this feat of writing magic, I would recommend focusing on what people mean rather than the words they're saying. So start with subtext and then kind of work up to the literary fanciness. So here's one trick for doing that. You might even start by writing your dialogue scene as all subtext. So kind of like pretend everybody in your scene is like a Vulcan or a robot or AI or something like that. And they're just literally writing what they exactly want to say to the other person. And they're not trying to be fancy. They're not trying to be subtle. They're not trying to drop hints. They're saying, I hate you. And this is why I hate you. (laughs) So they're being very, very direct. So write your scenes direct. That way you can really see how what you're saying and the subtext of the scene is going to move it forward and, you know, move your book forward through it. And once you do that, so once you have kind of your robot scene, now add the literary fanciness. Now, you know, add the subtleties, add the the way human beings talk, but maybe in a more poignant way than we talk in real life, because the major difference between how we talk in real life and how we talk, how people talk in books, in real life, it takes us forever to get around to our points because we're doing small talk and we're hedging and we don't really want to say what we're thinking. And I think if, you know, novels were like this, novels would be even longer than they already are if we had these dialogue scenes where nobody is saying what they mean and they take forever to get to their point and sometimes never get there. So writing dialogue is finding that balance, finding the balance of how people talk. So you do have to make people talk like normal human beings unless your character is not a normal human being. (laughs) So you do have to make them sound like a person, but just a person with more intention and clarity and focus as to why they're saying what they're saying to the other person. So start writing, start, you know, write the scene like two robots talking to each other and then edit it to read it like a scene. So it reads like a scene with humans talking. Another tip I mentioned on Saturday's episode and some other ones too, to write better dialogue, read, read and watch, especially quality movies and TV shows. For me, you know, movies and TV are the hub of dialogue-driven stories. 
So not so much the comic book action summer blockbuster ones, uh, more of the indie movies are a great place to start because they do focus on that human interaction. Kind of anything by Miramax <laughs> would be a good start. And movies based on books, obviously another place to, to read. Another quick tip, especially for you fiction writers with multiple lead characters in your book, and even those of you with ensemble casts, I know many of you out there have that, is make a concerted effort to distinguish between your characters' voices so they don't all sound alike, which would mean kind of like you, the writer. And here's one way to do that, something I learned from my longtime ghostwriting process where I record client interview calls and then I have them transcribed so I have the material to write the book later on. Sometimes when multiple parties are on the phone conference line that I use, for example, when I ghostwrite books for CEOs of corporations, it can be tricky to properly label who said what, even though the software I use does a fantastic job of disting yeah, distinguishing between reader voices. And here's an exercise for those based on this for those of you with fiction novels in progress with different speakers. So anybody who's writing a fiction novel who has different characters and you want to distinguish between them. Read out loud one of your scenes with multiple speak speakers, but omit any revealing descriptives like Dave said this and Mary replied that. So just read the dialogue without any character identifiers at all. Be as objective as possible when asking yourself the question, how different does the dialogue sound between characters? And you could even do this with someone else. So, you know, someone who's a trusted source of feedback for you who, you know, kind of understands the goal of your book, understands what you're doing, read the dialogue out loud. Don't, you know, don't change when, and kind of add a descriptor when the speaker changes and see if they can tell the difference between the voices. If each person doesn't sound distinct enough, it's time to go back to the character development drawing board and flesh out your characters a bit more. So each one is identifiable even without, again, the descriptors. Dave said, Mary replied, this doesn't mean go to extremes and stylize your characters so much that they you know, turn your book into a circus and they sound like freak shows. <laughs> so you're still trying to make them sound human, just slightly different, just like in real life how we are. The bottom line, great dialogue in a book, the ability to communicate with purpose in a way that reveals things about a person and sends a message comes not from the head. The head is where we have our intellect. That's where we get to be smarty pants authors and plot out our premises and plot lines. But dialogue comes from the heart and soul that universal soul that we all share as human beings, where we understand what it is to be betrayed, to be happy, to be angry, heartbroken, lost, confused. Be, be thankful that you share this human experiences with your readers, and you're not talking to aliens who don't know what any of those experiences are like. And I, you know, I think a lot of authors just, they overthink dialogue, so they're using their heads more than their hearts and souls. They're trying to make each word have this precise, perfect meaning. And yes, you know, dialogue should have meaning, but don't try to draw that meaning intellectually. Dig into your heart and soul and your deep understanding of the people in your scenes. And that is where great dialogue comes from. Thank you for joining me here on your daily writing habit, where I'm helping you write and finish writing an awesome book. Be sure and drop by my Inc. Authors group on Facebook for motivation, accountability, book writing, and publishing resources, and more. And if you know someone else who wants to write a book, please help them out and share your daily writing habit with them. Until tomorrow, happy writing.